It's Tuesday, March 3rd, and welcome to the Day Weather Podcast. Well, we actually don't have a lot to talk about over the next four to five days, which is actually good news for those of you that want some better weather. We're going to have to deal with the wind. There's going to be some windy areas, especially in, yeah, you guessed it, Wyoming and the wind-prone areas of western Nebraska. But other than some breezy conditions, really for early March, this is some pretty good weather that's going to last us through Saturday with temperatures moderating. We don't have any major weather system coming our way, so the overall forecast is pretty good. We're going to see high pressure be building in here by the middle to the end of the week, and here's this area of high pressure we showed you yesterday that's going to start to build in here during the day Thursday. So yes, we get to draw the happy face because once again, we're going to have two days, maybe three days of some really nice weather across the Intermountain West. Southwest winds will bring warmer air from the desert states right into the high plains and Rockies. We could see 60 and 70 degree temperatures across western Nebraska, extreme eastern Wyoming and eastern Colorado in this area here by Saturday. Now, will it be perfect? No. It is going to be windy, especially over the next few days. And for folks who are watching this podcast in northern Wyoming and western South Dakota, today and tomorrow night and Thursday, there's going to be a few rain or snow showers in the northeast corner of Wyoming. However, dry conditions will be noted elsewhere. So we've got some better weather coming. This is going to be especially true between Thursday and Saturday. However, as we go on into Sunday and Monday, this is deja vu. This is a pattern almost identical to what we saw developing this past weekend and into yesterday, and that was a low off the California coast and then a cold front coming in out of Canada, in fact, two of them. And what will happen Sunday into Monday, colder Canadian air gets pushed in and Pacific air gets thrown on top of it. So you guessed it, the next chance that we're going to have some precipitation will probably come late Saturday night, Sunday morning in western Wyoming, western Colorado, and then Sunday into Monday will be colder with snow showers or areas of snow. Now, we don't know yet if we're looking at accumulating snow in that Sunday, Monday time frame, but that's going to be our next best chance. Now, long term, I want to show you something. This is something that you always got to remember this time of year, is that you can have some really big differences in the computer modeling tools want to show you this is a forecast for the end of next week for Thursday and Friday of next week right around the 12th and 13th of February. Now this is the European model. This comes out of the European Union, one of the best computer models out there. We've got a low, a deep low heading into the California coast, another one coming in behind it. This system will kick out this one towards the east towards late next week. That could mean potentially late next week a larger storm system for the Intermountain West. However, if we were to take a look at the model that comes out of the weather service equivalent of Canada, look at that. Instead of a low off the California coast, it's backed up towards the Pacific, and we've got a big low in the southeastern United States. But we're look at this. We're under high pressure by the end of next week. So potential storm at the end of next week? No storm at the end of next week. This is why you never trust a five-day forecast in the spring. As you get into March, April, and May, really a forecast is maybe good out to four days. Past day five, this is what we're dealing with. And, and the reason we see these big fluctuations in the models is because the seasons are changing. There's a lot going on, too much for the models to handle. Now, with not much weather going on, I wanted to bring up something kind of fun. For those of you that are sky watchers, maybe amateur astronomers, or you're just interested in this type of thing, one thing that's kind of fun that's come up here in late 2019, a comet was discovered called Comet Atlas Y4. There's a couple of comets named Atlas, but Y4 is the one you want to remember. Why is this interesting? Well, this comet is going to get very close to the Earth right around the month of May, in early May, and this could be something that we see. What is interesting, this was a comet that no one really knew about till November, and it's taking the path of what was known as the Great Comet of 1844. It's not the Great Comet of 1884, but it may be a companion to it. Studies so far suggest that the comet, which is right here, Comet Atlas, this probably has not visited Earth's vicinity 
And well, it goes back to several thousand years when it was probably here last, so we don't know a lot about it. I want to credit Terry Lovejoy, an amateur astronomer who took this picture late last week. I'd follow him at uh, his uh, call sign up here on Twitter. If you want to keep up to date, he would be someone to follow on this. Why this could be fun is that as we get into May, this is a prediction of how bright the comet may be by early May in the Northern Hemisphere. That's predicting between three and four magnitude. That's a magnitude of a very bright star, but some predictions now have it at a magnitude one or two, which would mean it would be visible by the naked eye. So something fun to think about as we go into early May, and if we look at the prediction where it's gonna be in the sky, it's gonna be pretty high on the horizon in early May in the Northern Hemisphere. So for you sky watchers, kind of keep in mind that in early May, we may have a comet visit. So enough with astronomy, but there's not a lot to talk about with the weather. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.